Hi and welcome, my name is Lawrence Baker and this video is going to be about outputting WebP images from Photoshop using a plugin. Where do you get the plugin from? You get it from GitHub. So you don't have to have an account, all you have to do is scroll down, I'll have the link down below, and for Windows, click on that link, for Mac, click on that link. If you go to Finder, I'm on a Mac, the Windows one will look like this, but the Mac one has to be unzipped and it will look like that. Once you've got them, copy them. On Windows, go to Program Files, Adobe, Adobe Photoshop, Plugins, and paste it in. On a Mac, I'll show you on a Mac how you do it, because I'm on a Mac. You go to Applications, let's twirl this up now, Applications, find Adobe Photoshop 2020, and it has to be the latest version. Click down, go to Plugins, and paste it in under Plugins. Job done. But if you're on the latest versions of the Mac OS, you might have a small problem, and you might get a message saying, WebP Shop plugin cannot be opened because the developer cannot be verified. The way you get around that is you copy this bit of code here, Command C, go Command Space, type in Terminal, Terminal App, Command V, paste it in and return. Now I'm actually in Photoshop now, so that's quite convenient. And this is a large, image. I brought it in via Adobe Camera Raw. I'm going to resize it to the size I use on the web for lightbox images. Alter option, Command and Control I. 1600 pixels longest edge. I'm going to accept automatic resampling. Just go OK. Command and Control 1 for actual size. There's a problem with the WebP plugin at the moment and it is pretty crude. It doesn't support 16-bit images, and you have to convert to sRGB before you go to the plugin. Image, mode, eight bits. The next step is edit, convert to profile, find sRGB, engine Adobe, intent either perceptual or relative color metric and just eyeball it, but basically perceptual preserves shadow details, but might affect the tonality of the image overall, often makes it brighter, whereas relative color metric doesn't preserve shadow details as well, but won't affect the overall tone of the image. I think most people go with relative color metric. It's either or, you've got preview on, you click it and see if it's making any difference. Now dither is color noise to get rid of banding in images, so if you've got banding, tick it. I don't see any harm in it, I'm going to leave it on, so okay. So I now have an 8-bit image in the sRGB color space, it's being converted to that. Not assigned that color profile, but being converted. Now I would go file save as, I don't use file save, so file save as, I know in Adobe Photoshop you can use save and save as a copy etc, but file save as is easier as far as I'm concerned. Pick WebP, Go save. Once that happens, up comes the plugin. Yes, it's not very good. Tick preview is far too small. I don't know what the Windows version is like. I like to play around with the compression. Now, default is giving me 239 at 23 quality. Now, this quality is not linear. Sometimes some images can be smaller in file size in bytes, lossless than they are lossy. Lossy means you're throwing away data. And lossless means you're not throwing away data. Because what happens with compression, they often throw away some of the color and some of the high frequency detail. That's the finer detail. And your human eye can't normally spot it that well. Um, all WebP is, is an image compression method, which is far more efficient than JPEG, GIF, or GIF, or PNG. And it can support transparency and animation. It's the way forward. Whilst I'm here, there is one problem Safari doesn't support it. That is a problem. What I do on WordPress, I use a plugin called EWWWIO, and that converts my JPEGs on the fly to WebP for browsers that support WebP. If you're on Wix or Squarespace, you're stuffed. Anyway, I'm sure they'll catch up eventually. And if you're working in a, a digital agency, let's say, and you're a graphic designer or something, You've got to tell your web developer you want to use WebP and he'll have to alter the code so that browsers get given WebP if they support it. But only Safari doesn't support it at the moment. But let's get back to this plugin. So the quality is 23, so I'm playing around. So at 
239.4. I'm going to try slowest now. 244. It's actually bigger. So default. So certain things about this plugin do sort of confuse me slightly, but I presume default is either fastest or slowest or something different. I don't know. And they don't give a lot of information away about it. Now, the more you go to the left, obviously the smaller the file size. They say actually in their documentation about 70 for a photograph. That's a large file, 504, but I would never accept that. So I'm going to go back round 37. For me, it's got to be below 300 kilobytes or it's not worth it as far as I'm concerned, outputting at WebP. So let's get it down to 21 there. 229, a bit higher. And you can't click in this box and do it as well. So it's a bit fiddly. 245, maybe 264, 274. As long as I'm under... And also I'm under 300 kilobytes, I'm happy. Now keep EXIF data, that's camera data, like the time you captured the shot, even GPS data. XMP is extensible metadata platform from Adobe. And if it's a raw file, it'll be things like your keywords and your copyright, which is IPTC data. And keep ICC is your color profile. So ICC stands for International Color Consortium. So it will keep your color profile. That's important as well. So I'm gonna go for that 274. Then I'm going to go to a new tab, Command T. So I'm going to look at it in Chrome. Command Control O. There it is. Open. You can see it doesn't look that bad. Now, this is 100%. If I go into something ridiculous, I'm going to see artifacting, but that's fine. That's fine for me. I, I think that's acceptable. And the file size, let's double check the file size, is 281 according to my system. So that's pretty good. Whether I could got it smaller with JPEG, well, I'd have to play around a lot more. But if you don't like using this plugin yet, and it needs a lot of work, and I think the Google developers have written it for Adobe, but if you don't like using that, you can use squoosh.app. So it's squoosh.app. And just an example, a large photo, original image, 2.79 megabytes. Change it to WebP, and without any playing around with effort or quality, and I, I'm not here to explain what they are at the moment, I've got it 75% smaller. If you don't want to use the plugin, use Squoosh Online. You've more control with Squoosh, to be totally honest with you. So that's the Photoshop method showed and the other alternative, which is Squoosh. That's it, guys. Thanks very much.